Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Be not wrath very solid, neither remember iniquity forever. Thy holy cities are a wilderness, Zion is a wilderness, Jerusalem a desolation, a holy and a beautiful house, where our fathers praised thee. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this eChurch video for Advent Sunday, the beginning of a new church year. So, first of all, uh, a very happy new year to you one and all. We do hope and pray that this year ahead uh, is a happier year than the one that now lies behind us. Advent is after all uh, and above all a season of hope. We also hope and pray that this video and those that have gone before it and will follow it will continue to help you to continue in your life of prayer and discipleship as we seek to be the people of God in this place. May God bless you all. God of Abraham and Sarah and all the patriarchs of old, you are our Father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit, to make a home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a vision of the apocalypse that we are greeted with in today's gospel for Advent Sunday, a foretelling of terrible events to come. Jesus says, but in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. The whole of the 13th chapter of Mark's Gospel features apocalyptic imagery. The word apocalypse means unveiling, a revelation of something new after former things have passed away. 
Here Jesus uses language from the seventh chapter of the prophet Daniel. The powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and great glory. Daniel spoke of a succession of four kingdoms, which would be followed by the arrival of God's definitive kingdom. And this is a fulfilment of Nathan's prophecy in the second book of Samuel, that a son of David would reign forever. What does any of that mean, though? What does it mean to reiterate that the world will be shaken and the stars will fall from the sky and the Son of Man will come again after everything has passed away and he will reign forever? Well, there is a spiritual point of great significance contained within those terrifying words and it is this. We should not pin all our hopes on this world to give us peace and fulfilment We should not pin all our hopes on this world to give us peace and fulfilment. Such peace will only come with the arrival of God's kingdom. Jesus is saying that we should look to the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven in the ultimate sense. Ultimately, this is where our attention should be fixed. This will be the consummation of everything we have hoped for, everything we have longed for, everything we have worked for in the building of God's kingdom here on earth. It's not a very cheery thought, is it? I don't mean Jesus coming again. In fact, I've been thinking about that with something close to passive resignation in recent months. I mean the idea that there will be no ultimate comfort for us until that happens. The idea that everything we know and love and cling to for our security is doomed to die, bound to pass away. We are dreadfully impermanent. When I think of Advent, I think first of a season of quiet longing, of silence and beautiful music. Our days are wreathed in darkness, but still the light refuses to be beaten. The sun sets the sky alight in the mid-afternoon, even as it is dying, burning radiant orange as it sets, silhouetting the dark branches of bare trees and fields. It is so cold, and the darkness is always chasing us. But there is light, if you know where and when to look. We make light for ourselves, too. We light candles and we light fires and we tell ourselves the old stories of how the earth turns, how we are plummeting deeper and deeper into darkness, but the earth will keep turning and we will be brought back to light and life and warmth. We must wait. The seasons themselves teach us something of the pattern of our own redemption. In Advent, we are brought face to face with the starkness of our own mortality and fragility, something we have grown used to this year. And we are brought nearer to the naked face of God. Everything is stripped back, leaving only the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, leaving only the cry of our hearts, leaving only our own longing to see God unveiled in the form of a child, to hear him speak in the thinness of newborn wailing and the faintest of tiny baby gurgling. This baby will grow and his power will shake the foundations of the heavens. After that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven. It's not very cheery but it is full of the promise of a deep kind of comfort. There's no shallow Christmas cheer in the fundamental nuts and bolts of the Christmas story. We knew that already, I think. And this year, we're probably going to know it in the realist sense. Our task is to lay aside the powers of this world, lay aside the superficial sources of temporary happiness and look for what gives us lasting peace, lasting comfort, lasting joy. I was out walking with my friend Elizabeth last week and we noticed that the trees and hedgerows are absolutely bursting with fruit. 
There are acorns everywhere and slow berries in their hundreds still glint like tiny jewels. I was surprised. I don't think I've ever noticed that before so late in the year. Elizabeth explained that this year is what's called a mast year, a mast year, when trees and shrubs produce a bumper crop of their fruits and nuts. This abundance causes a boom in populations of small mammals like mice. And more importantly, it guarantees some fruit will be left over to survive and grow into new trees. Mast years have a major evolutionary advantage for the tree. Producing nuts Producing nuts is costly work and slightly stunts the tree's growth. But as it tends to happen every five to ten years, it's worth the payoff for some of the crop to germinate into new saplings. It struck me as so odd. It seems at such odds with everything that this year has been. But it is in fact a year of exuberant fruitfulness. A year when there is vastly more fruit than is needed, a year that will enrich and provide for many years to come. The seasons themselves teach us the patterns of our own redemption. When we feel alone in the wilderness of grief or disappointment, when we feel as though we are already living in a version of the apocalypse, as if we've watched it unfold in slow motion over the last year and we are so tired We are reminded that the slow work of redemption continues to occur. The kingdom is coming and is being brought about here among us, even when we really struggle to believe it. The son of man is coming on the clouds of heaven, even now in the life of the church. Our task is to remain hopeful, to remain attentive, not to give up, or to let our fatigue and our disappointment get the better of us. The task is to keep awake, for we do not know the hour that the master will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. All we know is that he is coming. Our task is to remain hopeful, to remain attentive, and to wait expectantly for the unveiling of God in the birth of his son. This time could be really fruitful, if we let it be. It's not empty time, far from it. It is such a gift to our spiritual lives and to the life of the church. I'd like you to take some time to prepare. Take some time to think about how you might use this time. Maybe write a list of things you'd like to spend this Advent thinking about. What are you waiting for? What are you hoping for? Are there areas in your life that are in darkness that could be turned towards the light and peace of the Christ child? Are there things that perhaps you need to let go of? You might think about letting them go into the quiet and stillness of this waiting time, into the silence where God is waiting for you, longing for you, longing to comfort you, not promising to make you cheerful all the time but longing to see you deeply joyful. I pray that God will bless you richly and that this Advent waiting time will be a time of real comfort and real joy. Amen. John Betjeman's well-loved poem, Christmas, begins with the lines... The bells of waiting Advent ring. The tortoise stove is lit again. Waiting Advent. The season of waiting for Christ's coming. Waiting for Christmas, the yearly celebration of Christ's first coming. And waiting also for Christ's promised second coming in glory. After my words, come, Lord Jesus, please respond, quickly come. Come, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Advent, Lord, we pray for our world to which you came at Bethlehem, this beautiful world, but one marred by tyranny, 
poverty, injustice, sickness and uncertainty. To our world and its peoples, in this time of our need, we pray, Come, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Advent, Lord, we pray for your church, bought at the cost of the shedding of your own blood. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. May it repent of its self-concern, its empire building, its harsh judgments, its reliance upon its own efforts and its disregard of your grace. Lead us away from these failings, we pray, that our thoughts may become your thoughts and our ways your ways. Come, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Advent, Lord, we pray for all who have found this past year, these past weeks, difficult, who have faced isolation, depression, hardship. Keep them under the shadow of your mercy in their days of darkness, that they may come to rejoice in your comfort, where we might speak an encouraging word or lend a hand Help us to stay alert. Come, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Advent, Lord, fount of wisdom, we pray for leaders of the nations and for all ministers of state. We pray for President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris as they prepare for their great responsibilities. We pray for our own UK government and heads of the devolved administrations as policies on public health, finance, European links and employment are worked out. We pray for all who work in the charities sect sector facing shortfalls in income. Come, Lord Jesus quickly come. Advent Lord, we pray for faith leaders that they may model respect and readiness to listen. We give great thanks for the example of the late Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs. Bless, we pray, our Anglican Archbishops and Bishops, among them George Pina Cabre, Bishop of the Portuguese Lusitanian Church. Also, we pray for our own clergy, Hugh and Alice, and all who will be leading Advent Reflections. Remembering our St Nick's Parish, we pray for residents of Upper Longleys Road and Saxon Street, and ask that you may come as welcome guest to all our homes. Come, Lord Jesus quickly come. Advent Lord, we place in your special care all who are very ill, all undergoing hospital operations and treatments, and people enduring long delays for medical attention. We bring our thanks for recent successes in pharmaceutical research and for all involved in the eventual distribution of the COVID vaccines. Silently, we recall those who are sick. And we pray for those who have died recently, suddenly maybe, or violently, and those who mourn their passing. We give thanks for those whose year's mind is noted in our church book of remembrance. And so we pray, come Lord Jesus, quickly come. The bells of waiting Advent ring, the tortoise stove is lit again. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts at Christmas, be king of our lives today. Amen. 
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and with everyone that you love and all for whom you pray this day and all your days. Amen. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness.